Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, photography fan. In this video, I wanna show you the power and the majesty of the Canon EOS Rebel XS, also known as the Canon 1000D, which is a 15 year old camera that is still relevant nowadays. I'm gonna show you my favorite settings to getting the most out of this vintage digital camera. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna focus on black and white imagery in this video. I'm gonna show you my recipe to creating amazing black and white shots with this 15 year old camera. We'll say this is Kodak Tri-X. Yeah, sure, that'll work. So we're gonna make some amazing black and white images out of this camera. Here's my settings. Now I've got the standard kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter EFS zoom lens. This is your standard 3.5 to 5.6 f-stop zoom lens that comes with this style of camera. This is sort of like the lower end of these kinds of cameras. This is what you will find at uh, Walmart and Target and such. But these cameras can still pack a punch. So this recipe that I'm gonna show you applies even to the most modern cameras nowadays. So if you wanna get some really cool black and white shots, here's what you do. Go into any of the modes. I'm gonna start with just P for program. Let it get the f-stop shutter speed for me, but I'll show you the rest. So turn that on. We'll set our white balance to daylight. That is going to be in black and white, so this doesn't matter too much, but I wanna set it to one particular white balance so it's not over-processing things, over-calculating. Just set it to daylight. Autofocus, one shot, or you can go with these other ones if you're kind of doing action shots. One shot is fine for me. On the drive mode, again, just single shooting or continuous shooting if you want to capture lots of photos at a time. Metering mode, evaluative metering should give you good results overall in a variety of lighting conditions, so keep it there. Although you can do partial metering, which is not exactly spot metering, but it focuses on the center, which is slightly different than center weighted average. So all of these various ways to get the right exposure this default is often the best. It takes the whole scene into account, gives you a good average. I'm gonna do an overexposure of one third of a stop. So whatever it gives me as my shutter speed and aperture, just slightly overexpose it, give it a little bit more light. And then here's an important setting. Over on quality, we're gonna keep this as high quality, large JPEGs. I know people love their raw images and you can do raw plus large JPEG if you want. I'm gonna keep it on large JPEG. Now the reason for this is, this technique is for straight out of camera shots. You can do a million and one edits in any raw processing software. So that might sound good, but in photography actually that's not great. Paralysis of decision is a real thing. When you can do a thousand different changes, you'll never be happy with your results because there's always another change you can affect. So if we kind of lock things down a little bit more, like classic film, it forces you to get better as a photographer. You won't be able to fix it in post. You'll have to fix it in camera. You'll have to get the perfect settings when you take the shot so that you don't mess with it infinitely later on. I know for some people that's blasphemy to not shoot in RAW. And I know people are gonna say, well, at least shoot in RAW plus JPEGs. So you have the most options. Nope, I'm gonna trust in myself as a photographer and I'll lock my settings in as JPEGs. Trust me. And lastly, here are the final settings. Our picture style. This is gonna be a custom picture style. Now you can quick set them here, but to program them, you need to go over to menu. Camera settings two, scroll down to picture style, press enter, and then go over to user defined one. Now when you make any changes to these user defined settings, they change color. 
You see I've got a couple of recipes here. I'll show you my monochrome recipe. You have to press then display to go into that sub mode and you can set your settings. The first thing here is, well, what basic mode do you start off with to make changes? I'm gonna go with monochrome, so black and white photography, and then increase sharpness to the maximum and contrast to the maximum. This is a plus seven on both. This is gonna give you very contrasty, very sharp images, like classic black and white photography, very artistic, very filmic. Next up, filter effect. I'm gonna get the red filter. This is one of the harshest filters you can do in black and white. It's gonna give you these extreme results, which are beautiful. A lot of the classic photos in black and white used a filter. Even though it's black and white photography, when you would put a glass filter on your lens, it would still alter your photo. And you can accomplish this here digitally. Yellow and orange are less strong versions of this effect. Red is the strongest. Green is on a different frequency, it'll give you different results. So I would recommend experiment with red and green and keep the one that you like, but we're gonna go with red. And then no toning effect. If you want, you can add sepia tone, blue, purple, green tone. I don't want any of that. So these are my user defined settings. This is my recipe for some amazing vintage black and white styles. Return with the menu and then set it with OK. So my picture style now is user defined one. When I go back to my main mode here, user defined one. So one more setting to apply to achieve the results that I've been showing you so far. Those photos have been contrasty, red filtered, grainy style, just like the classic film of old. Well, how do you achieve high grain in vintage photography? You use high speed film. And how do you set your high speed film on digital? That's your ISO. So. Instead of auto ISO, we're gonna switch over to the maximum of 1600. This is going to allow you to shoot in a variety of conditions, bright daylight, low light, still capture a great exposure. It's also going to introduce a lot of noise, AKA grain to your images to give you that classic look. And so remember, we're in JPEG mode, so there will no longer be any further editing outside of the camera. You can get it right in the camera instead of endlessly fiddling around in Lightroom, RAW therapy, etc. You've got it in the camera. I think that sometimes is a crutch for people. I'll fix it in post. There's nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time too. But if you want to challenge yourself artistically, shoot in JPEGs, with the right settings, you should be very happy with those results. Again, I'm using the basic kit lens, which goes from a wide angle of 18 millimeters to zoomed in at 55. In 35 millimeter equivalent, this is around 38 millimeters to 88 millimeters. So some nice wide landscape shots or some closer uh, portraits and the like. This is in full programmed mode, so it'll figure out the best settings for you. When you want to get more advanced, then you can switch over to these other creative modes. For example, TV time value. You can set yourself on a wide angle, which is around 38 millimeters. Go down to 1 60th of a second to avoid shake. On the other end, if you zoom in up to the, to the 55 millimeter, which is at around 88 millimeter equivalent on film, then you want to be at 125 at least to avoid camera shake. And at 1600, you'll be able to shoot at that speed with a good depth of field. The various photos that I've been showing so far are along those lines. I was at TV. I'm very happy with the results. I used my own recipe right here. It's my simulation of classic black and white film with a red filter. And I'd like to hear from you. Do you have one of these classic consumer grade Canon cameras just gathering dust somewhere after you've moved on to some new mirrorless wonder? Why not dust it off, try out my settings, lock yourself into JPEGs, and take some great photos right out of camera. If you do so, tell me about it in the comments. Tell me your own settings, your own recipe that you'd like me to try in the comments. Are you just starting off in photography? Digicams are great, but a more full-featured camera kit like this is the next level to explore. And this is a 15-year-old camera, so it's gonna be very affordable on eBay. 
And once you buy into this system, you can get all of these lenses, these EF or EFS lenses, to keep exploring your creative side. So in conclusion, I hope you like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. If you really liked my video, consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos, and pledging to the channel for $3.33 a month. What a deal. You keep the channel funded, you keep it going, you become a part of it. But if you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Like, comment, share, do all that good stuff. I would appreciate it. And let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. In the meantime, this has been VM Campos, and I'll see you in the next video.